Welcome back to the third series of process specification. And in this video, we will focus on the second method of process specification, which is decision table. And in this topic, we will try to understand what a decision table is and how to develop it. So what is a decision table? A decision table is a table, is a table of rows and columns, which are separated into four quadrants. The first quadrant, uh, which is the top left quadrant, this is where it contains the list of conditions that we that you have uh, to make the decision. Um, on the same row, which is the second quadrant, um, which is um, on the top right is the condition alternative. This is where we have several uh, columns, yeah? several columns of possible condition alternatives. The third quadrant is uh, which is shown on the on the bottom left quadrant is the actions to be taken okay so here we list down all possible actions that exist yeah, in the um, process and the final uh, the fourth quadrant, which is on the bottom right, is where the rules of for executing the action. So, depending on the number, uh, the rule, the condition alternative, then we would take the uh, appropriate actions. Um, decision table will help in. To, uh, will help the analyst to ensure completeness in terms of the all possible condition, possible uh, alternative, and possible actions. Thus, it would help to, it is easy to check the four possible errors. We, from the, from a decision table, we will be able to see of impossible situations, contradictions, and redundancies. Okay, so if impossible situation occur, if contradiction occur, if redundancy occur, yeah, on one decision table, what you can do, yeah, the analyst can do, is to remove this uh, errors. Yeah. Right. Uh, next, we look into how to develop a decision table. So basically, the first thing that we need to do is to determine all conditions that affect the decision. Okay, so all these conditions would be listed in the condition quadrant of the table. Okay, and in doing this, uh, in determining the conditions, Okay, we have to make sure that we put only the the the, the conditions. Yeah, try to avoid of a mutually exclusive condition. A mutually exclusive condition is is when um, is when there are 
a several number of rules that uh, that contain an overlap condition. Okay, so we should try to try to minimize the number of conditions by specifically have the actual condition, the real condition, the correct condition to exist in that quadrant. Okay. Second is to determine the possible actions that can be taken. So possible actions uh, would be written on at the bottom of the quadrant uh, condition. So those are um, okay. so um, the number would become the number of rows in the lower half of the division table. That is to determine the number of condition alternative for each condition. Okay. In the simplest form of a decision table, there would be two alternative that is a yes or no for each condition. Um, in an extended entry table, there may be many alternative for each condition. So it depends on whether you are using a yes or no a type of uh, alternative for each condition or uh, you have you, are, you, you use a different uh, an extended entry table. So make sure that all possible um, values for the conditions are considered. Uh, the fourth uh, st uh, step is to calculate the maximum number of columns in the decision table. Uh, how it can be done is by multiplying the number of alternative for each condition. For example, let's say you are using a two uh, alternative that is a Y and no, and you have four conditions. So in terms of what would be the uh, maximum number of columns yeah, in this quadrant, there would be 16 possibilities. Meaning that since one, one condition is two alternatives, so you times two times two alternatives times two alternatives from the second condition and times with two alternatives from uh, the third condition and then times another two alternatives from the uh, fourth condition. So all in, uh, so two times two times two times two, you will get a sixteen alternative. So you, in terms of the maximum number of column uh, for this quadrant, would be sixteen uh, possibilities or sixteen rows of columns. Next is to fill in with condition alternative. So this is a little bit um, a little bit uh, complex yeah, in terms of how should you fill in the conditions, but I will explain it through example uh, in the following slides. Um, uh, number next is then to complete a table by inserting an X where rules suggest actions. Um, Okay. Uh, number seven is to combine rule where it is apparent. So once again, we will look about how you can combine rules through example a little bit later. Eight is to check for impossible situations. Uh, impossible situations, uh, contradictions and redundancies. And basically, uh, for this impossible situation, we should remove the rule from the uh, columns. Yeah, we should remove the columns yeah, in the rules. And number nine is to rearrange to make it more. 
Okay, so uh, of of how to develop a decision, this decision table through exam the following example. Okay, let's see yeah, uh, in this example. Yeah, uh, the description given. Banner's restaurant has two categories of employees. First, an employee who will be paid based on monthly salary. Second, based on hours work. So we use the letter S to represent monthly salary and hours work with uh, let, a letter H, H. So basically, this is uh, a condition, yeah? the type of employee. If a, a employee can be of a month S employee or H employee. Another condition uh, is on the type of hours work. Yeah, so there are three types of hours work: less than forty, exactly forty, and more than forty. Yeah, so when if you read this uh, description, yeah, for a, a different out type uh, hours work of employee they would basically they would be uh their, their salary the calculation of the salary would be different for example for s employee s is just now say it's a monthly salary employee who work from uh, 40 hours or less than uh, 40 hours or more than 40 hours it won't make any change in their uh payment paid that they will receive because they will still be paid based on monthly base. However, we see that for H uh, group of employee, um, the number the, the number of hours work will have a different effect on the uh, calculation. Yeah? So, if an employee work less than 40 hours, the system will calculate their wage, uh, the hourly wage, and uh, an absent report would be produced. So, basically, uh, the wage would be calculated according to the hourly uh, uh, hours work. And another action is to produce uh, absence report. Okay. Uh, the next uh, statement says if H employee who has worked exactly 40 hours, the system will pay hourly wage. If H employee work more than one, uh, 40 hours, the system will calculate wage and also calculate for overtime. Right. So then from this uh, problem, This is the one decision table example yeah? and initial decision table that we can produce. Okay, so in terms of uh, conditions, right? So there are two conditions yeah? of employee type, hours work. Okay, so for uh, so so that's yeah, for the uh, condition alternative. Yeah, the rule alternative we will have uh, in here we have like six columns yeah, because we are using based on employee type which is S or H. So if employee type is so so uh, on the columns yeah, we will put like uh, S, H, S, H, S, H and um, uh, why, why, why we have six columns? Okay, because uh, beside employee type, the working, the hours work, yeah, it would be uh, less forty hours, equal forty hours, and uh, greater than more than forty hours. So for each, we will see whether they are of S uh, employee or H employee. So thus we have yeah, as shown in this. Uh, initial table we have uh, the first alternative is when employee type is s and employee the hours work is less than 40 
Okay. Uh, the second alternate, the con second uh, condition, yeah. Second alternative is when employee is H with less than forty hours uh, work. Yeah. So we you can see on uh, the rules. Yeah. So we have six rules with six possible uh, combinations. Right. So at the bottom of the um, table, we have the action. So what are the actions from the problem? So there are four actions. Yeah, the first is pay the base salary. Second is calculate hourly wage. Third is calculate over time. Fourth is produce absence report. Yeah, so you need to be able to extract these actions from the problem given. Alright, so now um, once you have list down, yeah, we, so once we have list down all these uh, four actions, then the final part is to um, to determine yeah, for each rule combination, what should be the action entries. So for the first rule, which involves S worker, so we, from the problem say for S worker, we pay the base salary. Yeah, so the calculation, the wage does, uh, the, the number of hours work is not going to affect the base salary. So that's why in column uh, 1, 3 and 5, since 1, 3 and 5 involve, um, uh, refer to employee type S, so we would mark the pay base salary for these three columns. For the next, uh, for the next uh, combination of rule, yeah. Since the second combine the second rule is for employee H and work less than forty hours. So if you refer back to the the problem, the description given for employee hourly wage uh, employee uh, with number of hours work less than 40 the action taken would be to calculate the hourly wage and to produce absence report so there are two actions that would should, that would be taken for this rule okay so next uh, you know so you move to rule number four okay so rule number four exactly 40 hours work for hourly wage employee the uh, and uh, the action that would be taken is only the to calculate hourly wage uh, and finally on the sixth column where employee hour is h then uh, we will uh, and and the hours work so there are two actions okay to calculate uh, the hourly wage and to calculate the overtime. So this is the initial table. All right. So now what do we need to do next? Okay. We will see, we, the next thing is to see at whether there exists an um, impossible uh, alternative or would there be some kind of an overlap uh, alternative? Okay, so does we try? We will try. We will try to see whether we can simplify this table. Right. So if we look at this, uh, this is the simplified table. So how do we come up to this table? Okay. So if we look back here. Yeah, from this table, yeah, when we look at employee type, uh, for employee type HS, yeah, the monthly, uh, the salary base on uh, monthly uh, salary base, yeah, we see that, yeah, look at the combination and look at the action. Okay, so you can see that, yeah, for these three rules, yeah, as long as the employee type is S, 
then the action taken is pay based salary so we see that whatever the value, whatever the 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 condition of hours work yeah the rule for hours work it it is irrelevant okay because if the hours work is less 40 or 40 or greater than 40 yeah the same action would be taken yeah, which is pay based salary so this is from this example we see that we can actually combine rule 1 3 and 5 okay so how do we show it on the table yeah, this is how we show it in column 1 of this simplified table okay so in this table we we mark the employee table with s okay however for the uh, hours work yeah we just mark it with uh, we just mark it with a dash okay meaning that when we mark with a dash we are saying that no matter what yeah the possible value uh, in that column it doesn't make any problem it doesn't have any effect to the action okay so thus for employee type s hours work is dash so it can be if whatever the hours number of hours work it doesn't matter yeah? the action taken would be just to calculate the pay base salary all right so thus yeah from the initial table uh, which we have rule one three and five it is combined into one yeah into only one column yeah we, whereby we mark it with s and dash right, for the hours work okay uh, two three and four yeah it doesn't uh, change yeah so uh, because this alternative always uh, is valid yeah rule three two three and four they are always valid yeah there is no um overlapping no no um impossible so these are the fixed uh, rule so we will maintain two three and four okay and maintain the uh, action uh, taken okay so this would be the final uh, decision table for the problem right i so i hope you are uh, you can understand how to develop a decision table okay um, this is another example uh, this example is showing when we have a use when we use a yes or no uh, situation we are actually based on the first problem you can also try to to come up with a decision table uh, using a uh, yes and no uh, condition uh, sorry yes and no alternative okay so here yeah uh, so this problem, uh, you uh, think you can uh, try to look on this uh, problem, uh, the description of this problem in the candle uh, book. Yeah. So it's about constructing a decision table to for deciding which catalog sent to customers who order only from selected catalogs. So for this problem, yeah, uh, when you read along the uh, the problem, you will be able to identify three conditions and three actions as stated on this diagram okay so we want to show eh, i want we want to discuss on when we have yeah what how do we come up with these uh, alternatives yeah for the rules okay so remember the from the steps yeah uh, mentioned uh, here yeah uh, four yeah step number four to calculate the maximum number of columns uh, in the decision table then before we can fill in the condition with alternative so 
let us go back to this slide. Okay. So in here, we have eight uh, columns. So how do we come up with eight columns? Because see, we are, here we are using a yes and a no uh, alternative. Um, and we have identified three conditions. So since we have a yes and no, so it would be, a, so in terms of the number of columns would be two times, two times two times two. Okay, so we have two yes, no for the first condition, two from uh, Christmas catalog, uh, the second condition, and another two alternative from the, uh, from the third condition and thus this brings us to a total number of eight possibilities or eight possible alternative okay so thus we have one until eight in yeah, the columns uh, right so the next thing is to fill in the columns with uh, the possible uh, action sorry the for the possible alternative so how do we do it so what we can do yeah, what we should do is for the first four columns, we fill in uh, for, for the first condition. It's first four columns, we fill it with a yes. And the next four columns fill it with a no alternative. Uh, for the second, uh, for the second uh, condition, okay, then we take uh, the first two as a yes, the next two column as no, then the next, uh, another next two columns would be a yes, and another next two, the final two columns would be a no. So you see the pattern how you can put the alternative here, yeah, with yes and no. And for the third column, we have a yes. For the first column, the next column is a no. Yeah. And the next column with a yes, another column with a no, yes, no, and yes, no. So this would be then the possible combination yeah, of alternative of actions, of conditions. Okay, so when, once we have filled in with the uh, alternative then we will uh, mark the actions uh, to be taken the entries of actions to be taken yeah so when we look at uh, eh, from from the reading yeah from the problem it says uh, if all is yes all condition is met is yes then we say send out both catalogs both catalogs here were referring referring to uh, the christmas catalog and uh, specialty uh, catalog okay uh, for condition two yeah for alternative two we have two yeses and one no yes for fall catalog and yes for christmas catalog but no for form catalog so it is with uh, from the problem. If you read further the problem, say um, we have we mark it with X. So we mark it. Yeah? So you need to understand it yeah, from the description in order for you to be able to mark the correct entries. All right. So this would be the initial table. Right. So now we look into the yeah we we look into uh, how can we simplify yeah how can we simplify do we need all these uh, alternatives to be there do we actually need all these alternatives are there any kind of of uh, an impossible situation based on this alternative or can there be any overlapping yeah can we combine just like what we did uh, for the first example earlier. Okay, so we need to uh, look at the all yeah, this right hand side of your 
the decision table. So the next slide will explain to us in terms of what should we do. Now, if we observe and yeah, look at uh, column alternative 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay, so... Uh, So this is a, yeah, this is the, the initial table yeah you at this initial table for row for column two four six and eight so in this we see that we have uh, all the combination it consists of yes yes no yes no 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 yes no okay and we see that for this uh, three as uh, the four eh, actually for this four two four six and eight okay uh, the the same eh, for this uh, based on the condition uh, the this combination of rule yeah this uh, possible uh, alternative rules yeah would have and n yeah and for the third condition and looking at the first two condition we have a yes the first alternative yes yes the second yes no uh, the uh, six for rule six is no yes and uh, rule a is no no and you can see that yeah actions here yeah, for this four uh, alternative the actions is the same that is the first action yeah to send the christmas catalog so if we look at this we can see that as long as the third condition is the same in here, the third conditions are the third condition uh, alternative is the same for all rule, yeah, which is a no, and the actions also taken it also the same, yeah, for all the four uh, alternative, and what is uh, but then for the first two condition. It can be anything. It can be a yes. You can see a combination. There uh, a, a rule, two rules with yes, two rules with no. Here, likewise, the same. Yeah, for this, uh, for the first four. So that's that's why we see that we can combine this to become one. So it really here it, it's labeled as two prime. Uh, to say that it's actually combining between from two, four, six, and eight row. Okay, so uh, since for the first two columns, it can be anything, it can be a yes, it can be a no, so we put a dash yeah, for the first condition. For the second condition, under this rule, this new rule, yeah, is to put a dash as well, because it can always be a yes or a no. However, for the third rule, sorry, for the third condition, we put a no, an N. Okay, and we mark it with uh, the entries of action uh, for from the first uh, action, yeah, which is to send the Christmas catalog. Okay, so we see here from two, four, six, and eight, we combine it to become only a single rule. All right, so the, that's for the, the this. Uh, four columns now uh, we look at uh, can we is there any possibility of combining the other columns <laughs> okay so if we look yeah so the, the way we look at it yeah the same as how we do when we look at uh, two four six and eight so we see that yeah, the same thing happened to a uh, column uh, okay uh, in terms of action, yeah. Uh, look at for the third action. Okay, we see that rule alternative one and alternative five have um, 
the same action okay and alternative one and five also have the same um, condition for based on uh, one uh, sorry uh, caught um, for the second and the third condition okay because the first and third condition for one and five we, it holds the same value yes yes okay so once again uh, and for the first condition for this rule one and five we see that it is it can be either yes or no okay so from here we see that we can combine one alternative one and alternative rule five to be one uh, to be one uh, rule yeah so Okay, so what this uh, col new column would be is for the first uh, row of act of condition, we mark it with a dash. For the following two conditions, we maintain with the Y. Okay, and the entries mark would be the third uh, action. Okay. And the same thing if you observe column 3 and column 7. So these two columns will, can be combined to become one column. And thus, yeah, and so this would make a, the simplified um, decision table. So this would be our final decision table yeah, for this uh, situation, for this problem. Okay. Uh, so this one is how it is being explained yeah, uh, in the, uh, based on the previous slide, the same thing. Right. So, uh, we should also check for completeness and accuracy. So we look at, is there any impossible situation? So this is just another example. Yeah. If you look, let's say we have a, a decision table which look like this. Okay. Uh, so this is an example of a, an impossible situation. Okay. Because both condition is marked with yes and yes. Okay, but then look at the condition. It says salary greater than 50,000 and salary less than 2,000. So for both. So there is no way a situation of an employee whose who salary is two. Yeah, meet the two conditions at the same time. Yeah? So this is an example of impossible situation. So what you do is actually you need just to cross out this uh, rule from the table. And another is uh, about uh, condition, contradiction and redundancy. Okay, from, from this example, yeah, if for example, you have uh, what we can see as a contradiction. So a contradiction is when we can see two, one, uh, two or more rules, yeah, two or more alternative, it's not, uh, they contradict with each other. Okay. So, for example, here, yeah, condition one and condition, based on condition one and condition two, uh, we have all these three uh, rules, rule one, alternative one, two, and three. It has yes, yes, okay, yes, 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 yes. And uh, for condition three, we have a dash. Remember when we say a dash, it is, uh, it may, it can be either a yes or a no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a no, we have a yes, a no. 
Okay, so here we can see and and the action taken. Yeah, this is both for the first two condition. Yes, yes, action is action one. Um, but then when we look at at uh, two, yeah, alternative two, it is yes, yes, and no. Okay. However, action taken is three. Okay. And the same thing also for alternative three. We have the first two, yes, yes. We have dash, dash can be a net or no, yes. But then this time, it is, um, it is marked with um, action number two. Okay, so these three rows contradict with each other. So we need to find out whether what is actually the the, pos the 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 possible combination and possible action right and we need to uh, uh, we need to then uh, make sure that whatever yeah possible actions here yeah, they don't contradict with so we need to do possible corrections yeah, to the table Okay. Uh, another another possibility that can happen is redundancy. Okay, so here we have, uh, for example, for column four and five. Okay, for column four and five, yeah, uh, the condition is yes for condition one, uh, no for condition two, and for condition three it can be anything. Yeah, and the same action yeah uh, is taken. Which is take uh, we, um, we, it is marked with uh, for action one. Okay, so this is example of uh, redundant condition. So we can actually remove one of it. Yeah, remove one of it. Yeah, so um, then we will we will be able to simplify. Yeah. So simplifying uh, a division table is we are looking into can we uh, reduce the number of alternative? Yeah. Can we reduce the number of rules that we can follow? All right. So that is about um, about a decision table and how you can build a decision table. So next, yeah. You can try out yeah, uh, to produce a decision table using uh, based on the problem that are uh, given in checkpoint one. Yeah, so try this out and see whether uh, you are able to come up with the a decision table for the problem. You can check your solution with your lecturer. Uh, so I think that's about it. So thank you very much.